Oh, hi. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today, we're blowing up the Audi. Well, Michael, what exactly are we doing? So, you know, it might blow up, it might not. And, and let me, before we dive into this video, let me just say, if you're at home and you're watching this, don't ever do this to any of your turbo vehicles. This is a stupid idea, but I want to do it just to try it. The turbo has 100,000 miles on it. She's gonna go, she's gonna go. Just hopefully she don't take the motor with her. We'll see what happens. But what we're gonna do today is we're going to tighten the waste gate. Now I'm not gonna tighten it too much. I'm gonna try to tighten it just enough that maybe I gain eh, three pounds. We'll see what happens. Just enough to, you know, get that peak boost up just a little bit more. And that turbo's going yeet! Yeah, um, the problem with this is um, you're basically, you're, you're overworking the hell out of your turbo because the wastegate isn't opening when it needs to, okay? Um, that, that inherently presents a problem where you could overspin the turbo, blow the turbine up, yada, yada, Hence, yada. if you tighten it too much and completely shut off the wastegate. Yeah, that's relatively easy to do too so don't get crazy with it yeah um i'm probably only gonna tighten this nut mm, three turns maybe four if i'm feeling wild <laughs> we'll see but honestly guys this is for your guys's entertainment and for me to find out what happens what's our first step here so first step is don't look at my table second step is you're gonna want to remove your intake so your car might be different. We got the stock intake, you're gonna have your air box here, your noise pipe, all that bull crap over here. For me, it's relatively easy. I got the forge intake, take off some hose clamps, pop the thing off, no big deal. Just make sure you disconnect your map sensor, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, sometimes these map sensor, there it goes, nice. Sometimes you gotta get a little screwdriver in there and kind of lift up on that tab. Don't break it. Just like that. Shove it in the hole. You really don't want to drop anything into your turbo. You're gonna have a bad day. Very bad day. <laughs> you really old weeble wobble. And there's our turbo. All right, boys. We have reached the turbo. The Taiwanese twisty boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's an American twisty boy. <laughs> don't get shit mixed up. She's original now. <laughs> Until I buy one of them Taiwan <laughs> when this one blows up. All right, we got the intake off. That's a big fucking intake. Yeah, look at it. It's like a. It's like. Would you guys like? Well, some, it's like that piece too. Would you guys like some girth? Yeah, like if you put the whole thing together, like. She's a real girthy it's boy. It's a long boy. Oh, oh it's broken. <laughs> Oh, she got a little wet. Oh, this is squirt. <laughs> so we got the intake off. We got the heat shield off. The turbo is exposed. Now our next step is to drop the exhaust and the downpipe so Michael can get his hands on the wastegate. Yeah, it's a lot easier when the down... It's, you really only need the downpipe out of the way, but in my case, it's just easier to just let the exhaust kind of just drop down and then the downpipe just kind of falls down. And... Hopefully don't switch my downpipe. Okay, what's next? Yeah, so I did loosen it up enough last time that the wastegate is able to move and that's not good. So what what did you do wrong last time? Last time I loosened it cause, cause I don't know what I was doing. You're an idiot. Cause I lick windows and so much misconception on the internet about which way you turn the fucking nut and it's so outrageous. You want to shorten the overall length of the wastegate rod. What that does is that puts more preload on the spring that's inside the wastegate diaphragm, making it harder to open, which means you're gonna spool more. More spooly boys, speak of spooly boys. Just, just go explain Okay, so to YouTube, your little... <laughs> the best way that I have found you're gonna be able to get to uh, the two adjustment nuts on this wastegate, while the turbo's on the vehicle anyway, is uh, I got a nice, really, really cheap uh, Harbor Freight box wrench here lobbed it in half so just so it says chrome 
you know, that's about the length you want. You know, it's 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter nut, and you're gonna want the end, the open end like this. D depending on how old or how good a condition your car's in, that nut might be really rusty and seized on there. You may or may not even be able to break it free with this. This wrench, what it allows you to do, because when, it, when it's full size like this, you literally do not have enough room to fit this full wrench down in there. You need to have it short like this, and, and, and it's gonna suck. You know, you're, you're gonna be fighting it. You, you, you can't see what you're doing. For one, you really can't get a good grasp of how many full rotations you're getting of the nut. So, we're gonna spitball it, you know, get it kind of close. Um, they also had to file down yeah, so. this socket right here. So, you can see how thin this socket is around the side walls. Now this is to uh, actually break that jam nut free that's on the very end of the shaft. The shaft. Now because the shaft is so close to the pivoting arm, you can't fit a full size socket onto it. The socket. 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 You can't fit a full size. It, the, the walls of the socket are actually too thick to fit on the nut. Instead of overcomplicating it and having to reach all the way down into that corner of the engine and pop the vacuum line off the wastegate, I just decided to shave down a socket like this. Socket. <laughs> it really allows you to get in there just fine. Um, Redneck ingenuity. Yeah, I mean sometimes you got to think out of the box, but it allows you to get on that nut and actually break it free. So what we do sometimes you just make stuff work you know not everything's sometimes, sunshine yeah like not sometimes every, it be like that yeah not everything's sunshine and rainbow farts you know <laughs> i mean you got to do what you got to do sometimes go three more right so i'm gonna go up, up, approximately three more however I, whatever we think that is it's really hard <laughs> it's incredibly difficult <laughs> to 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 have an understanding of how many turns you're actually giving this nut. So, you know, you just kind of wing it. Um, don't get crazy with it, you know? If your get car- Get jiggy with it. Yeah, if your car is, is, is currently stock and, and the waste case never been with, then yeah, you, you know, you kind of have a good reference point and, and you don't want to get crazy with it. You could very easily damage your engine. We just might. <laughs> now, I gotta reach up under here. <laughs> Do the old spaghetti. Spaghetti. You gotta get like right here, you know, hand on the tranny mount. <laughs> Head in the hole. <laughs> hand on the Gotta get one leg up on the bumper there. Yeah, one leg up. <laughs> Tighten the nut. Fuck <laughs> it. So Michael got that nut turned about four times actually, so uh four. It's gonna be full send. Four-ish. <laughs> four-ish. Four-ish. Maybe like eight. Uh so we're gonna every like ten. <laughs> We're gonna get everything put back together and then we're gonna see, we're gonna yeet this motherfucker up. How much boost can a BPY high output engine take? Stay tuned. Go find out. All right, we got all the essentials put back together. Michael's gonna turn it on and we're gonna, you just fucking shit your pants. I sure did. Oh my God. God. We're gonna turn it on, make sure everything idles okay, make sure it runs smoothly by itself, and then we'll take it for a test drive and blow it the f up. Yeah, it's still up to the monitor. Seems good. Yep, she idles.
the butt dyno feel though? It actually feels really good. You know, I feel like it holds boost at higher RPMs better than it did before. You know, before it would taper off to 20, 19, 18, once you start approaching 6,500 to 7,200. Whereas now it pretty much holds at least 23 to 24 all the way through the rev range where it spikes, you know, around four, five, five and a half at 26, 27, just depends. Oh, are they racing right there? <laughs> watching guys uh honestly if your car's got a lot of miles on it maybe this mod would be worth i wouldn't call it much of a mod more or less compensating for wear we'll say um in my honest opinion <laughs> nobody should ever do this to their turbo one if your turbo is getting old and it's not holding as much boost as it should it's probably time for a new turbo it's not time to crank the nut down on the wastegate <laughs> now <laughs> For me, you know, I'm doing it for you guys. I want to see what happened. I burned an entire, over, oh, yeah, I burned like a half a tank of gas. I mean, we were ripping it. And <laughs> seems to be no adverse effects. It holds boost at higher RPMs. Uh, seems to pull a lot harder. So, yeah, I mean, it, it works. Um, it's obviously the life of the turbo is going to go down dramatically. Um, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how long this lasts. Tomorrow, you know? yeah. the turbo went out. Yeah. <laughs> You don't know. Hey, it could last another 100,000 miles. It's it, it probably not gonna the way I drive it, but you know, if your turbo's a little worn and you're trying to squeeze every last penny you can out of it, maybe do it, but I would highly advise, advise against it. Save your money. Just buy a turbo and live with your car being slow, but it was fun. Hey, and uh, if you uh, have the drive and the motivation to kind of cut your hands and mangle some tools and get up under there to tighten the nut, have at it. Now make sure you uh, hit the like button and you subscribe. Always use the comments. Till next time, guys. Peace out. Sound, yeah, that sound good. Tell them break it down. I saw Wendy's in your town. Don't forget the